Hi, this is Jacob Anderson, and today's video is going to talk about removing and reinstalling your quill for servicing or replacement. There's a few tricky little things. It's easier to see a video about it than to read a list of instructions. So this is to help my customers if they ever need to take their quill out and replace it or work on it. So the first thing you need to do is uncover the set screw at the very top of the headstock. A lot of times they're covered by putty and they're in this location right here. And you use your standard Allen wrench to take it out. This set screw is really just to keep the quill from twisting under loads and also to keep it from coming out all the way when you're drilling. Okay, that's out of the way. Now you would just simply turn it all the way out until it's released. But first I need to show you that you might need to clean on the inside. You might need to clean dust from the advance rack and from the quill rack itself. Lots of dust and wax and oil cakes in there. So you may have to scrub those areas with a wire brush. I've already done it, so this one's pretty clean. So it might take you a little bit of scrubbing with a screwdriver and a wire brush to be able to remove it easily. So once that's done, you just rotate all the way out. It just released. Pull it out. Now I'm holding on to the handle because the spring is very powerful. And I need to slowly release the spring until it's neutralized. Right there. If I let it spin around, I could get hit by this. I've had my knuckles busted <laughs> by that. But also, inside the spring itself may come loose, uh, and there you got another problem. So, carefully unwind it like that. Okay, so now let's say you're servicing it, you've done the work or you bought a new quill, putting it back in is very easy as well. But uh, when you go to reinstall it, you're going to be dealing with the drive sleeve at this back end. And you're going to be bringing the shaft here and it's got to mesh and go into the splines. So what you're going to have to do is turn the shaft, rotate the shaft, because you're probably just going to clunk up, clunk up to it. So you can either, it's probably easier to rotate this shaft to make it mesh, because you're going to be dealing with the handle. Now on Gilmer's, it's similar, but their splines are much larger. So again, you just have to get it to the right point where it'll mesh. You're probably just going to be clunking. And Gilmer's looked three different ways, but basically it's a metal on metal spline system like that. And you may also find that the, this shaft here has sagged a little bit when it comes. So you may have to reach inside and push up slightly as well as be turning. So. I think the, the Gilmers could be slightly trickier to get back in than the, the, poly, the poly V style ones. I think it's a little easier to get these back together. Alright, so to reinstall it, one thing I do when I repair machines is I uh, buff the inside of the whole chamber with a wire brush. You could use a root, uh, circular root wire brush or hand wire brush. Just clean out all the gunk that may have accumulated. And you can also wax the outside of this and wax the inside of that to make it more slippery for future use and less rust buildup. Okay, so now let's show you how to reinstall it. So the, the advanced mechanism, the spring, is still neutralized. So we're going to turn this clockwise. We're going to rotate it about three times. 
One, two, three. Just depends on your spring. Sometimes you get more than three, sometimes you get a little less. And I'm just manually inserting this in here. This uh, groove is up. The rack end is down. So I have to slide this in. And now I have to work with this and this to try and get the, the rack engaged. Okay, so now the rack is engaged inside there. Now it's going to come in. Now that one just slipped, <laughs> that one just slipped right in. <laughs> I had no problems with that one. But usually uh, it's going to gonna clunk like, like that. See, it'll just come to a stop. So push it out a little bit, start rotating the inner. I'm rotating the back drive sleeve. And it's going right in. So that one <laughs> worked out real easy. So uh, there's a few things going on. You're having to negotiate it to get started back in, reconnecting it to the advance rack, dealing with the handle so you don't get whacked or anything, and then getting those meshed again. And now, reinstall the set screw. I like to go ahead and take it all the way down to its cinches, but then I can't move it, so then it just takes a quarter or an eighth of a turn. And it's far enough to keep it from coming out too far, and it keeps it from being able to twist, and there's no binding as it comes in and out. And then you can put some putty over the top of that so you're never going to accidentally touch it. Just fill it with some putty. Let it dry, and then nobody will accidentally remove that set screw and mess things up. Uh, you can do the same with the set screw for your quill if you've uh, worked on it or something. So that's the uh, process. Again, my name's Jacob Anderson. I have a website with lots of information. I service shopsmiths. I sell some parts for the insides, the uh, repair parts for the insides of the headstock. I have links to other YouTube videos that I've made. I sell full length repair DVDs. I sell a troubleshooting guide. I sell switches and bearings and belts for the headstock of the Mark V. So go to my website, <coughs> look at all the information there, and if you need to get a hold of me, it, it tells you how to email me or how to call me if you need to. Thank you.